please join me in welcoming to the stage John Clouder, 2022 Nobel Prize winner in physics. 여러분 큰 박수 부탁드립니다. Well, I hope there wasn't a significant miscommunication in the invitation for this particular talk. I'm going to give a, uh, another one later on, the keynote address. Uh, I was asked for the first, uh, make some brief remarks as inspiration to young uh, Korean uh, scientists. Uh, I'm not sure, wasn't sure how to do that. Um, so here's my best shot at it. And it really has very little to do with quantum uh, technology, but here are my inspirational uh, thoughts. A long time ago, actually my whole life, I have been uh, an experimental physicist. I have had the distinct privilege of literally being able to talk to God, even though I'm an atheist. In a physics laboratory, I am able to ask carefully posed, mathematically based questions and correspondingly observe universal truth. To do so, I make careful measurements of natural phenomena. In the physics laboratory, I once settled a debate between Einstein and Schrodinger on one hand John, uh, Niels Bohr and John von Neumann on the other. In the laboratory, I asked a simple question, which one of these two groups was right? And which one was wrong? I didn't know ahead of time what answer I would get, I just knew I could get an answer. Nonetheless, I found real truth for the answer. I assert that real truth can only be found by observing natural phenomena. Uh, to, uh, by caref carefully observing natural phenomena. Good science is always based on good experiments. G good observations always overrule purely speculative theory and provide uh, sloppy experiments, on the other hand, uh, are frequently counterproductive and provide scientific disinformation. That is why good scientists repeat each other's experiments carefully. For inspiration to young scientists, I would suggest that today is an opportune moment for careful observations of nature. Why? The, cur the current world I observe is literally a wash, saturated with pseudoscience, with bad science, with scientific misinformation and disinformation, and what I will call technocons. Technocons are the application of scientific disinformation for opportunistic purposes. Non-science business managers, politicians, politically appointed lab directors and the like, are very easily snowed by scientific disinformation. Sometimes they participate in its origination. The purpose is to just try to inspire you uh, as young scientists to observe nature directly so that you too can determine real truth. Use the information gained from carefully performed experiments and research to stop the spread of scientific misinformation, disinformation, and technocons. Well-educated scientists can help solve the world's problems by acting as scientific fact-checkers. A fact-checker's most common problem, unfortunately, is determining what is true and what is not. Uh, the world is awash with someone else's perception of truth as an alternative to real truth. 
perception of truth frequently differs significantly from real truth. Moreover, given sufficient promotion and advertising, perception of truth becomes truth. It's, it's promotion by commercial enterprise is called marketing, commonly used in the furtherance of, of political, commercial, or various opportunistic ends by us promoters. When the promotion is done by government or political groups, it's called spin or propaganda. To such a promoter, perception of truth is truth. If you can sell it, it must be true. If you can't sell it, it must be false. Perception of truth is also malleable. If you can sell it, if you want to sell it, and you can't sell it, that's easy. You change it. You can change truth. You can claim false observations if necessary. My favorite in this act is ChatGPT. It's very good at doing exactly that. It has uh, lots of man-made pseudoscience to copy and manipulate and emulate. It can lie and cheat even better than its human mentors, whose writings are abundant in literature. In literature, you will observe there's far more fiction than there is nonfiction. Pseudoscience is science fiction. Unfortunately, neither computers nor human fact checkers can in general tell fact from fiction or science from science fiction or from pseudoscience. Hey, if Starship Enterprise can fly faster than the speed of light, then it's got to be possible, right? All you need is dilithium crystals, right? Wrong. Real truth is not malleable. It can only be found by making careful observations. Well-tested laws of physics and observational data are an important guide to allow you to distinguish truth from perception of truth. Now, I am not alone in the uh, observing the dangerous proliferation of pseudoscience. Recently, the Nobel Foundation has formed a new panel to address the issue called the International Panel on Information Environment. They plan to model it after the UN's International Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC. I think, personally, that they are making a big mistake in that effort because, in my opinion, the IPCC is one of the worst sources of dangerous misinformation. Uh, what I'm about to recommend is in furtherance of, that, uh, of the aims of that panel. In the past, we scientists act, uh, have acted as referees for journal articles, peer-reviewed, uh, and we have peer-reviewed each other's work. So as just to prevent the proliferation of scientific misinformation. That process recently seems to have broken down. Somehow it needs to be re-energized. During my career as a scientist, I have frequently been asked to referee lots of scientific journal articles. Here I will offer a few pieces of advice. First, very importantly, your work should be based on careful observations of nature. You must try hard and recognize what I will call an elephant in the room, in, 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 uh, hiding in plain sight. Uh, ask very simple questions. I found an elephant in the room that I will be describing in my keynote address in quantum mechanics. I have a second uh, elephant in the room that I have recently discovered regarding climate change. I believe that the climate change is not a crisis. Real truth could be found if and only if you learn to recognize and use good science. It's especially true when real truth is politically incorrect and does not reflect the science, uh, to, uh, reflect political business aims or desires of leaders. Even the scientific community can sometimes become diluted by pseudoscience. 
Recall, if you want pseudoscience to be true, just simply spin it and it becomes true. Importantly, a referee must know and use mathematically based physics. A good scientist must also know how to derive and solve differential equations. That was the first thing I learned as an undergraduate at Caltech. Follow the teaching of Sir Isaac Newton. He found that the world is governed by differential equations. He had to invent calculus to do it, but he did it. A referee must correctly identify the dominant processes. That's the starting point. The best way to do this is with order of magnitude estimates of the various conceivable processes. I, one of my examples I can give later, I don't want to have time to do it though, regarding climate change, the, thing, the dominant process, I believe, has been misidentified by factors of 200. So if you're off by a factor of 100, 200, uh, your process is way too small to be important. It's the big one, big numbers matter, little numbers can be neglected. Sometimes people will promote new ideas that are off by factors of a million. Uh, they just simply uh, haven't run the numbers themselves. Most pathetic part of all this is that they don't know that they need to know how to do that. Their lack of scientific knowledge allows science and pseudoscience to promote what I will refer to as technocons, political opportunistic aims. Technocons are readily unmasked and identified if you simply apply order of magnitude calculations. Very importantly, a referee must apply good calculus-based statistical methods along with good common sense. I would also like you to consider methods used by two of my former associates at University of California, Berkeley, Nobel laureates. Uh, when they were shown data, a group of data points, and told, look, the trend is obvious. Louis Alvarez, the Nobel laureate, would look at it and say, flattest line I ever saw. Charlie Towns, would look at it and say, I don't see in the data what you're telling me I'm supposed to see. Beware, if you're doing uh, good science, it may lead you into politically incorrect areas. Uh, if you're a good scientist, you will follow them. I have several I won't have time to discuss, but they are, I, I can confidently say, there is no real climate cr crisis and that uh, climate change uh, does not cause extreme weather events. Thank you. 네, 좋은 말씀 해주신 존 클라우저 박사께 큰 박수 부탁드립니다. Please give a big round of applause to John Clauser. Special thanks to John Clauser.